When in doubt, when you have to choose between the fact and the fiction, you take the fiction every time. So The Given Day is a perfect example. I, sp I lost months on that book because the pivotal event that caused the Boston police strike was the death of the police commissioner who was working with the guys. He was, he was very sympathetic to their cause. They didn't have money, but he was sympathetic to them. And he was a very caring human being. His name was Edwin O'Meara. And when he, Stephen O'Meara, sorry. When he passed away just before Christmas in uh, 1918, that they replaced him with a guy who literally hated policemen and hated the Irish, which pretty much covered the Boston Police Department at that point. And that led to the Boston Police Strike. So I needed to get that fact in, that there was once hope and then it died. Now, I lost months of my life trying to work the book around the events that happened in December when he died because I also had a molasses flood to get to and I had all these other things to get to. And it wasn't fitting that he died there. And then one day this voice in my head, this wondrous voice in my head said, who gives a shit when he died? Put in what you need, when you need him to die. Put in what's dramatically interesting. What, are you going to run into the only Stephen O'Meara expert in the country someday? <laughs> He's going to call you out in a crowd? You know, well, actually, he died December 18th, you know? Not January 27th, you know? And that was a great moment because I just said, now, come on, that doesn't really matter. The fact is that his death caused the Boston police strike. The specific details of his death are irrelevant. So I needed, again, I had to choose between drama and choose between fact, I took drama. Same thing when I was writing, well, I was writing this book, you'll see this, uh, Joe ends up, uh, the main character of this book, um, the first part is very kind of Joseph Campbell influenced and he has to go down into his cave. So he ends up going to prison. It's very important at a sort of a mythological level that he go down and then come back up again. So he ends up going to prison. The prison in the United States at that point was Charlestown State Prison which was the, one of the worst prisons in the United States. And it was where that summer, in the summer of the book, Sacramento and Mizzetti were executed. And it was a very Dickensian place. It had been built in the 1840s. It was surrounded by factories and trains. And then the waterfront on either side, the water on either side. So this was like straight out of Dickens. Smoke everywhere, smell of chemicals, and this really, really hideous Gothic prison in the middle of it all. Problem is, there's no wide photographs of it. Nothing. You get one. You get find one type one. That's it. There's no descriptions um, outside of you know the sort of basics. So as I was painting the canvas, I kept getting obsessed with what the factories were. What were the factories? I went to the Mass Archives. I went to the Boston Public Library. I went everywhere to find out what these factories were. And I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find a word on any of it. And then one day I went, Who cares? <laughs> Make it up. And I made it up. And it was just as good. Because who cares? What I would have changed the word tar for the word smoke. I, mean, I don't know what I would have changed, but it, it all worked out. It's all fine. So in the end, if you got to choose between the fact and the legend, print the legend there. <laughs>